Uh, let's welcome Amazon Lit, uh, Sebastian and Eric. <laughs> How we living today? We good? Fantastic. What's up, Miami? How we doing tonight? Amazing, amazing, amazing. This is so exciting. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. We got a jam-packed day full of ton of information to help all of you grow your Amazon business. But now we got this. So this is what we look like today. Right, these are two of our production stations. This is about <laughs> six hours of sped up operation in our warehouse. There's another three stations that you can't see. And remember what Eric just said, he, we had four total stations in Pinebrook <laughs> producing about 3,000 ASINs a day. Now we have five stations where we are and we produce 15,000 a day almost. Yeah. 15,000 ASINs a day get produced. So how many people want to grow their business and, and pump more units out? Raise your hand and say aye. Nice. What? I can't hear you. Raise your hand and say aye. Nice. Awesome. Fantastic. Right now, keep in mind, this did not happen overnight. Absolutely not. It didn't happen overnight. This took lots of long nights, early mornings, late nights, you know, family calling. Hey, E, you coming home? Hey, Sebastian, you coming home? It's like, no, baby, I'm still at the office. I'm going to be here until probably three in the morning because we're changing our systems, right? So we made sacrifices early on. Fortunately, our families were able to understand that. Communication is key when it comes to growing your business because you gotta be on the same page with people that you're working with and your families. How important is family? Raise your hand if you think family is important. Absolutely family is important. Right, how many have kids in here? Awesome. How special is that feeling having a little kid? It's amazing, right? I don't know, but my mom tells me all the time. She's like, Eric, it's the best feeling. It's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> She's like, how's it feel to have four beautiful kids special? It's great. It's great. Does Most it have four? Thank four. <laughs> two girls, two boys. And he adopted me. Her warehouse. Her warehouse. And Eric. He's actually building our team. That's like the, that's the 2025 team, right, Sebastian? Yes. So I know Sebastian works his ass off because he wants to provide for those little kids, you know, the little, little beauties. One of, one of his kids is, is my goddaughter. So what do we got next? So we're going to talk about the IOs, the first option here, internal operations. Super important, right? We're going to recover receiving, picking, producing, shipping, monitoring, all that stuff internal that happens within your business, inside of your business, right? Super important. So what are some of the things in the internal processes, Sebastian? So the internal operations is how you're going to be able to get your products in and out to Amazon as fast as humanly possible, right? We bring in truckloads every day. We ship seven truckloads in a five-day work week to Amazon fulfillment centers. And the reason we could do that is because we get it in and out less than 24 hours. In less than one workday, we're getting full truckloads, 26 pallets, broken down, received, picked, staged, brought to packing stations, produced, brought to shipping stations, loaded onto trucks, and shipped out seven full truckloads in a five-day work week. Mm. So what that would look like for you to duplicate this process, right? There's seven stages. It's pretty simple. The inventory comes into your facility. Whether you're in your garage, it's even better if you start when you're smaller because then when you begin to scale, it'll be that much easier. It's just a matter of making some tweaks to the size of your business. But it starts, you unload it, right? You get it out of the truck. You put it preferably in a receiving area, a designated area where the inventory goes so you know, hey, this is inbound. This hasn't been touched yet. We didn't even look at this yet, right? And then you start the breakdown process. You gotta check for discrepancies. We ordered 120, only got 118. Am I gonna report the two? Is it only two? Is it worth reporting the two? Do I just eat it? You know, are we short 60? Did we get 60 over? You want to communicate that with your vendors and distributors so you're not leaving money on the table. One of the things we also communicate early on with a supplier, distributor, wholesaler in our relationships is expiration. Many of you know that Amazon requires certain expiration dates for certain products. It's become a little bit more specific, so we've had to transition and make changes. However, a majority of our products are about 120 days. Some a little bit longer, but typically we need 120 days. And because we communicated that early on and built the relationships, that also is considered part of that discrepancy. Not only shortages, not only overages, not only damage, 
But if a product comes in with less than 120 days, we can return it, no question asked. And I didn't forget about y'all YouTube folks out there. So in the comments, put where you're from. I wanna know what the furthest country away is because we appreciate everybody. Throw some fire emojis in those comments as well. We appreciate you attending this event as well. So after that inventory is received, it's broken down, right? A discrepancy is documented. It's reported back to the company. Then you gotta add the products to an Amazon shipment, right? And then those products need to be picked meaning that they're actually moved from one location to a production station over to staging, right? So it's the full process. You receive the inventory, you count the, the invoice, make sure it's accurate, you report the discrepancy, and then you pick it for what's going on the Amazon shipment, and then you stage it at the front of a production station. And too. communicate with your suppliers their discrepancy time. Some suppliers need it within 24 hours. Mm. Some will wait a week. You need to build that relationship and ask those questions so you're not sending it three days later and they're saying it, we needed it within two business days and you're shit out of luck. So how many people love looking at their profit margin every day? <laughs> right? I love that shit too. It's one of the first things I do every morning. I love it. I love it. It gets my juices flowing, you know? Just get souped up. Woke up, wake out of bed. It's prayer, coffee, car, podcast, profit margins. You know, we gotta create an acronym for that with a t-shirt because it's exciting. Right? But don't get too focused on the profit margin, especially who's in your first two years of business? Probably a lot of you, right? Awesome, so about a third of you in your first two years of your business. Right? In the first two years of your business, you should be focused on, especially if you're doing a, a wholesale business model, right? even retail arbitrage, you should be focused on moving a lot of inventory for a few reasons. Count health metrics, Amazon trusts you more, customer feedback, buy box priority, because the more you sell on Amazon, the more listings you're on, the more Amazon prioritizes you and puts you in that magical buy box. Who loves the buy box? I love the buy box, right? The buy box is amazing. Everybody wants the buy box. Most of the shopping happens on cell phones where people aren't even looking that tiny little, how small is that lettering? You need glasses to see it. It's like, click on 11 more sellers. It's just buy box. I want it now, 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 now. Instant gratification, right? So a lot of people spend too much time focused on that profit margin. That's not to say profit margin isn't crucial. Right, profit margin is super important. You need to be making money because if you're not making money, you're not going to be taking care of those kids we were talking about before, or your family, or yourself. We're big picture people, so when Eric's saying profit margin, it's he what he means is that it's not the only piece of the puzzle, mm. and too many businesses just look at how much am I going to make off this one order? Is it 10 percent? Is it 20 percent? And they're not looking at. How many orders could I move in a month if I drop my profit margin by 2%? How many will I move in a year? How better will my relationship be with my supplier if I'm placing orders more frequently? How much more feedback will I have which will help me get the buy box? All these other pieces of the puzzle are lost by the illusion of just looking at the profit margin. Some other things that dropping your profit margin can do is give you happier suppliers because you're able to increase your order sizes, right? Better pricing. And then we get to efficiency. We were talking about our production stations, right? So let's say hypothetically this table was our production station. The less your employees move, your packers, the less they move, the more money you make. So I just, I don't want them stepping over here. I don't want them stepping over there. I want them standing right here. And everything is in arm's reach because every step they take, I lose money. You lose money. Who likes losing money? Show of hands. Nobody, who likes making money? Show of hands. Awesome, right? That's why we're all here, to grow our businesses. That's why you came out. That's why this guy came from San Francisco, to make more money. So the less movement your employees make, the more money you make. And I just want to touch on one more thing when it comes to production. So when we showed you that screen early on in warehouse number two with the tables, we would have a few different of our warehouse workers on the same table, but they'd each individually be working on putting components and building ASINs, right? Putting ASINs together, prepping. They would do the whole process. We learned quickly that that was not the most efficient way to do it. You want multiple people working on the same ASIN. Mm. Per the first person on the line is grabbing the product off of the pallet or the U-bolt, putting it on the table, opening up the case, while the second person might be taking the different components that were now put on the table and putting them together, bundling them, to, to prepare the ASIN, then the next person down the line might be doing the final prepping, whether it's choke hazard stickers, the F and SKU sticker, this is a set do not separate sticker, and then putting it in the box. So it's just like any manufacturing line. 
when you're putting ASINs together and you're doing wholesale and bundle, when we go back to profit margin, bundling is where you're going to see the highest profit margins, not those single items, especially in wholesale. Yeah. Bundling is where you're going to see it. And this is why we develop these processes to grow our business. And some ways to speed up your efficiency are as soon as a product is finished box, you want to put it on a pallet and move it to your shipping station. You know, you also want to track your metrics. How many of you, whether you're just starting, you're experienced, whatever, regardless of where you are in your business, how many of you know on average how many products you produce out of your place in a day? How about how long it takes? Do you know how long it takes to produce your ASINs on average? These are important metrics to consider, right? And we, we never did this. We're, we're sharing this information with you because we learned this and all of a sudden our business began to skyrocket. In the past 12 months, our business has grown 100%. That's crazy. How many people's business has grown? I'm sure a lot of your hands are growing up. Well. How many people's businesses has grown in the last year? Yeah, exactly, right? Amazon's just flooded with new customers. Three, 30 million new Amazon Prime members joined Amazon in the past 12 months because of COVID, right? And that's not going to change. Those 30 million members aren't going to cancel their membership. So what's that mean? More opportunity for us, more opportunity for all of you. And then some of the other internal processes that you need to understand, keep a competitive sellers, all that stuff on the buying side. You know, understanding your margins and your profitability and then your, your IP complaints. So like, that's just like the basics, right? You gotta get down the basics and have your buyers understand all that information because it's, it's super important. It's super important. Can we uh, step back to shipping? I just want to touch on something. Yeah, sure, anything for you, bro. Thank you. As far as the shipping goes, a lot of people look at, it's kind of like that profit margin thing where we were just covering. A lot of people look at the price of your LTL, your, your less than truckload, well, not, for, not for anyone who's using uh, U UPS, Amazon Partner Carrier, SPD, keep doing that, that's the best way. But this is strictly for LTL, people that are palletizing their products, less to truckload, full truckload, and they're looking at Amazon Partner Carrier and seeing this phenomenal price that they can't get from any other carrier, or maybe they think it's seamless, and so they're selling on Amazon, Amazon will handle that, why look anywhere else? Well, the reason you wanna look somewhere else is because when you use Amazon Partner Carrier, you're using Amazon trailers. And so what that means is your product gets to Amazon fulfillment centers, and then guess what? It doesn't go to a loading dock like a private carrier would that might cost a little more money. It's sitting in Amazon's fulfillment center in the parking lot until they're ready to unload it. Mm. How many of you are shipping LTL right now, pallets? How many of you are waiting greater than two weeks for your product to check in? How about three weeks? Four, five, six, anyone with six? <laughs> Give me seven, who's got seven? <laughs> who's got eight? Who's got eight? <laughs> My point is, saving those few hundred dollars, I'd rather pay six hundred dollars, I'd rather pay a thousand dollars for a carrier than pay my 250 with Amazon Partner Carrier and have my product there when it's supposed to be at my appointment time and checked in and live on Amazon within two days. Because if you have a pallet of products, how much value is there? For us, it's a full truck load, so there's a lot of value there. And how many times can you possibly turn it mm. in a year? If, you, if I could do in two days what many of you are doing in four weeks, that means I could bring in, let's do the math, about 15 truckloads, 15 deliveries before you even get your one checked in. And over a year compounded, what's that gonna look like? So $1,000 for a carrier all of a sudden doesn't sound too bad. So before we get to the external operations here, I want everybody to stand up one more time. We're gonna get uncomfortable together. Who likes to get uncomfortable together? I love getting uncomfortable together. Let's do this. All right. So on the count of three, I want everybody to say, I can do anything if I take action and then scream. So I'll do it, right? I can do anything if I take action. Ah! Right? You got it? <laughs> You got it? got it? So one, two, three. Yeah! Awesome. One more time for me. One more time. One, two, three. Yeah! Awesome. Fantastic. Right? Change your mindset. Change your physical state. Let's get into this. All right, so the external operations, the EO.